Good morning, class. Nice to see fresh new faces, so eager to learn a privately funded, compartmentalized, cognitively indoctrinating lesson about something that surprisingly, for once, is not random, trivial information, but is a universal truth that will actually be of use to you in your future endeavors, no matter what field it is you plan on entering. You know, from the past 13 years of my teaching, I've come to learn something. About only half the people in this room right now will show up again next week. Now, decoding consciousness has been registered as a philosophy course. So those of you who used to philosophy here are probably thinking this is going to be one of those lectures on books written by ancient dead social outcasts about existentialism, epistemology, or stoic metaphysical principles. Well, you are dead wrong. In fact, a course like this has not been taught in over 3,000 years since Akhenaten's infamous mystery school. Let's get straight to our first lesson, shall we? Do you see that? Isn't it beautiful? A formless, shapeless conformation of matter, of particles separate to the point that it creates a thermal grid, a matrix of free-flowing electrons, of a light that arose from the interaction of multiple condensed vibrations, what you human beings call plasma or fire. What is the state above plasma for which the medium of charged particles is so unbound and the emission of energy is so great that it no longer possesses shape or form? similar to three degrees above absolute zero where it is so cold that all the atoms in an object merge into one, forming a fractalized electromagnetic hologram, a matrix of entangled light energy interacting with the electrochemical grid of the neurosynaptic web that we call a brain. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about absolute zero. Minus 273.15 degrees Celsius to the point where it is so cold or so hot that temperature itself cannot exist. To the point where matter collapses back into energy. The point where there is no longer any mass and the particles lose their angular momentum or spin. A point where there is no mass meaning there is no time and there is no space. What was once matter becomes a vacuum. A void in which all times and all spaces are occurring simultaneously in one cosmic moment. This is the realm of the mind, the source of all consciousness, all experience, all qualia, emotion, thought, belief, ideas. For it transcends the dimensional limitations of physical perception. This place cannot be seen, cannot be heard, smelt, tasted, or touched, for this place is the source of all sensation. It cannot be observed, reduced, or supervened, for it is the source of all observation. It is a scientist looking through a microscope only to see himself or herself. Or it is that same scientist looking through a telescope only to view himself or herself. But it is not a place in the sense of a space, for it has no space. It is nothing, and it is everything. It is the timeless, for it is that which has no time, and that from which all time arises. It is a moment, an instant, less than an instant. It simply is. It is the place where all memories are stored, and the place where a future lies. And it is known by many names. The unified field, the zero-point energy field, the bioelectric field, the spirit world, the dream world, the ancestors, the underworld, the afterlife, heaven, hell, the astral realm, the Akashic records, the fourth dimensional plane, the collective unconscious, Plato's world of forms, the imaginatrix, the imagination, the mind, ether, prana, chi, life force energy, kundalini energy, the spirit, the soul, God, you, me, us. And I must point out that this is not a belief, it is fact, for it is that which has no belief, that from which all beliefs are conceived. It cannot be experienced through any perspective, for it is the absence of perspective. 
it is the absolute truth. Now that I've explained to you the end result of our eight-week lecture and discussions about the universe and mind, now you should have a good idea about what this course entails. If you think that what I have told you is complete bullshit, and I should never have earned my doctorate, well, I do agree with you. Because I have no idea how the hell I got my PhD. But if that is the way you think, then it is probably best that you leave this room right now. Well, if not now, then you should leave eventually, because this course is clearly not for you. This is a course for people with an open mind, who possess the extremely rare ability of thinking for themselves. People who believe, but also disbelieve. Because if you blindly believe everything that I'm telling you right now, then I'm sorry, but you're an idiot. But if you disagree with what I'm saying, just because it does not associate with your subjectively rational mind, then that would make you a cynic, or a self-proclaimed skeptic, and that's just as worse. So if you want to handle the truth that you will be bombarded with, not to mention do well in this course, the first thing, the second thing I'll mention towards the end, the first thing I'll have to ask you is to throw your conditioned belief systems out the door. That includes religious, scientific, cultural, and psychological. The last one may be a bit harder than the others. Now, on the paper in front of you, it outlines the course material. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It's a very nice font, Hermaculum. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it too. Nice, big, and informal, but not too informal, because then you can't read it and it's all scrambled up like dead ants on a page, you know? But anyways, the first chapter is on sacred geometry. You'll learn these basic universal shapes of consciousness for the first couple weeks, because they are fundamental principles that will teach you to observe patterns in the chapters ahead. And the next chapter, or the chapter ahead, is on the universe. This includes everything from the Big Bang, the beginning, to the Big Crunch, the hypothetical end, from the cosmic phenomena of quasars and giant hydrogen gas clouds being compressed into plasmic balls of light, to the subatomic and the quantum world within every decision we make. All of it. The chapter that follows will be about the mind and body. No, not the brain. The brain is a blob of lean meat. The Egyptians were right about that shit. You should just take a big iron hook and shove it up a dead person's decaying nostrils, pull the brain out, and throw it in the trash. It's useless. The mind, however, is not. The brain is physical, but the mind is immaterial. It is the source of our existence. It is everything and everyone. It is all that ever was, is, and ever will be playing out the illusions of linear space and time. Okay, chapter 4, or the final chapter, is on our distant and beautiful sick and dying poor mother, who has to bear the weight of our stupidity. Yes, I'm talking about Mother Earth. Isn't she just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? She's amazing, truly magnificent in all her beauty and might. And this chapter also includes evolution, but not the Darwinian evolution you learned about, real evolution, with a hint of extraterrestrial, psychoneurological, cybernetic intervention. Of course, I'm not here to discuss or debate to you about aliens, dualism, human history, secret societies, and shit like that. I'm here to tell you what I know, not to entertain your opinions or beliefs. As a student, you can choose to take my knowledge or leave it. Or you could also choose to take a straw and suck on it like this. <laughs> if marks and the passing grade mean that much to you. That brings me to the final point this evening. As you probably already know, this is a philosophy course. However, you will not find any philosophy in this course. And that is because the era of philosophy is long dead. Deceased buried in the ground to be mourned by hippies and cursed never to see the light of day again. But there's a reason. There is a reason. Philosophers were just ordinary people who learned how to think, but people don't think anymore. 
they follow. Like a bunch of sheep behind a shepherd, or little kids walking into a forest led by the psychotic Pied Piper and his flute. Like machines, like drones, not humans anymore. Yeah, no one thinks for themselves anymore, but they listen to whatever bullshit comes out of their teacher's mouth, or the news, or the radio, or on the internet. They blindly believe whatever the government or people in authority tell them. We live in an age when humanity has without a doubt lost touch with itself. We have lost the ability to think with our minds and feel with our hearts. The things that make us human. We've lost it. I mean, no one wants to become a philosopher anymore because philosophers don't make any money. No one wants to become a poet because poets are homeless. No one wants to become an artist or a musician because real music, real rock and roll, real folk, real hip hop died a long time ago and was replaced with mindless trash from the mainstream music industry because selling your soul makes money, doesn't it? Just like if you want to be an accountant or CEO of a company, yeah, keep following that green stuff. I hope every single one of you in this room achieve everything that you ever wanted in life, only to realize that it never brought you happiness. The sad, unfortunate condition of modern man. After all he has destroyed in this world, after he has brought the world to extinction, disturbed a piece of nature, gone to war and murdered millions for resources and private gain, created an economy that never shares with those across the world as they die in the land that he has helped strip. When he is the cause for every bit of suffering within this world and within himself. Anxiety, depression, anger issues, war, greed, hate, the social plagues of our time. When will he learn? When will he learn when everything is gone? When the last tree has been cut and the last river has been poisoned? When we're at the climax of World War III, America and her posse versus Iran, Russia and China as history repeats itself like a mindless song constantly stuck on replay. And do you know the real reason why things will never change? It's not because they're incapable of changing, and it's not because humans are self-centered or hateful in nature. In fact, the research shows the exact opposite, that we are loving and compassionate beings, and that is exactly what nature teaches us. From every ecosystem within a tree, and the democratic votes of every wing within a flock, to the fish as they have learned to swim as one. From every herd of bison and caribou, to even a pack of vicious wolves who have learned to work together and share a meal. We have lost touch with nature, but the reason to why things will never change is because of this. It's because of this fucking education system, the one you are in right now, that has been designed by those who came before you, to train you, to have you never question authority, no matter how stupid the ones in power over you are, and to never disobey the rules of this sick, twisted, collapsing, failing society, and to provide the illusion that intelligence comes with conformity. Out of all the dropouts and failures from wherever the hell you came from, you have arrived to this university. Congratulations. You are here because you know how to follow rules like a good slave. You know when and where to shut the fuck up. And above all else, you know when to sacrifice your humanity for wealth and survival in a socially enslaved planet. That's why this world will never change. Because you are the future, the patrons of humanity, and you have a choice. Whether you sit and take this bullshit, or whether you're going to do something about it. About all of it. And I don't mean charity, because you know things are messed up when corporations and banks make trillions a year, and the middle class have to spare their change to make a change in this world. I mean, sometimes you gotta learn to resist. To resist the system. To resist this way of life. Because we both know it's wrong. And a couple more years of this, and you won't have a world left for any of your future children. Now why is this important in relation to the course? Because the most important thing about this course is that I am not here to teach slaves. I am here to teach free thinkers, dreamers, healers, and rebels. People who will change the world. Thank you. Now get the fuck out of here. Class dismissed.
Tears are filling up their glasses. No expression, no expression. Hide my head, I wanna drown my sorrow. No tomorrow, no tomorrow. Then I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take. When people run in circles, it's a very, very mad world. Mad world. Children waiting for the day they feel good. Happy birthday, happy birthday. And I feel the way that every child should sit and listen, sit and Tell me what's my lesson Look right through me Look right through me And I find it kind of funny I find it kind of sad The dreams in which I'm dying Are the best I've ever had I find it hard to tell you I find it hard to take When people run in circles It's a very Silence that speaks so much louder 